Kevin Feige and Disney are scrambling to save the MCU. We've got Deadpool and Wolverine coming up. And then a bunch of movies a lot of people aren't excited about other than Blade, which isn't really even production. It doesn't sound like it even has a script yet. So there are problems brewing at Disney and Marvel Studios and all that kind of stuff. But Kevin Feige showed up to CinemaCon 2024 and broke out the big guns. We got more information and scenes regarding Deadpool and Wolverine, as well as some information and scenes for Captain America Brave New World, the first Captain America movie starring Sam Wilson as Captain America, played by Anthony Mackie. And I believe Kevin Feige might have said something along the lines of, this is just as good as Captain America Civil War. We know that's not the case because they're refilming all of it and they're having to scrap all the major action scenes and apparently there are a lot of issues with the film. But I can't blame Kevin Feige for going out there and actually saying that it's good when he knows it probably still needs a lot of work. I do believe that he and everyone at Marvel Studios and Disney are fully behind Deadpool and Wolverine. It feels like they think they've got a hit and they put a lot of promotion behind this at CinemaCon, including a weird popcorn bucket or at least the mention of it, which I'll get to here in a moment. But Let's get to the first scenes that kind of play out what this is really going to be about. Then there's another scene that kind of tells you, or at least demonstrates the kind of humor and meta commentary we're going to get in Deadpool and Wolverine. And then we'll get to the popcorn bucket. And then we'll get to Captain America Brave New World. Wade Wilson, a.k.a. Deadpool, is shown sitting across a table from Matthew McFadden's Mr. Paradox, who informs Mr. Poole that the TVA is a sort of watchdog organization charged with defending the sacred timeline What's more is that Wade has been chosen for a higher purpose, one which could in fact save the sacred timeline from certain doom. It's then that Deadpool figures out that he's being sent into the MCU. Various clips from past Marvel Cinematic Universe projects are shown on monitors. Wade is especially amazed to see Steve Rogers, Captain America. Wilson gets gussied up in a brand new super suit, courtesy of the TVA's in-house tailor. He also receives a pair of adamantium katanas. So there you go. That's the big impetus for Deadpool entering the MCU. The sacred timeline is in jeopardy, obviously introduced in the Loki TV show. And obviously we got all this multiverse stuff. We're in the multiverse saga itself. Uh, Kang playing out and Doctor Strange, the multiverse madness and all that stuff. This is playing right into this. Apparently things are in jeopardy. And only Deadpool from the Fox Cinematic Universe can save the day in the MCU. Makes sense, I guess, as a way of bringing something that was certainly established in another universe into this one. Because you do have the multiverse, you do have the sacred timeline, and you do have an entity or organization out there that would be interested in going out and recruiting someone like Deadpool. Of course, he's not going to take it seriously because he is Deadpool and they are going to harken back to scenes and pictures from past Marvel Cinematic Universe movies to kind of show him what's going on there, what the heroes are. So he's not completely unfamiliar with everything going on, and they are going to give him a spiffy new suit. He's going to have some katanas, and I imagine they're also at some point going to be recruiting Wolverine. We do know that Deadpool and Wolverine get into, I believe, a car together. They have a little conversation, and perhaps uh, Wolverine makes fun of Logan's new outfit, and then he says, well, I don't want to look like the L.A. Rams, because Wolverine is in his gold and blue kind of classic cartoon look. I imagine I'm not the only person that's been waiting to see Hugh Jackman's Wolverine in an actual Wolverine costume for a very long time, so I'm excited about that. And that's basically the setup or the premise of what Deadpool and Wolverine is going to be. Of course, there are going to be lots of jokes, and we do know that Ryan Reynolds, who stars as Wolverine, is playing a big part in the production of all this, as he has done with the first two films, and it's going to be very meta Here's an example of that, another scene that they played out. At CinemaCon 2024, Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige took to the stage to showcase an exclusive sneak peek at the upcoming Deadpool and Wolverine. It was during this look at the film that a scene was shown featuring a cameo from Thor using archival footage from 2013's Thor The Dark World. The sequence showed the mighty Asgardian crying over Deadpool's body, much like he did with Loki when the trickster faked his own death. Suddenly, Deadpool reportedly runs out of the scene, looks straight at the camera, grabs a microphone, and exclaims, Suck it, Fox. I'm going to Disneyland. Get fucked. And I imagine there's going to be lots of Fox jokes and Disney jokes and Disney acquiring Fox jokes and Deadpool taking the piss out of established MCU movies. Maybe stuff that they got wrong. They certainly got Thor The Dark World wrong. Uh, Maybe they're trying to make fun of that. Uh, replaying a scene. I wouldn't probably remind people of Thor The Dark World because in phases one through three, it's the worst movie. It's it's worse, in my opinion, than Iron Man 2. It's worse than Iron Man 3 and it's worse than Captain Marvel, which I think are the three other real stinkers that happen in phases one through three. Thor The Dark World, probably the worst one out of all of them. 
It's just a terrible movie. I recently watched it, and uh, I don't like being reminded just how bad that movie is, but I imagine there will be plenty of scenes of Deadpool making fun of things that have happened in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Of course, we've seen this already in Thor. We had that joke where we had uh, Loki disguised as his father with the play with Matt Damon up there, and they're doing the you know death of Loki and all that kind of stuff for the play, and then they end up doing it in Thor Love and Thunder, basically the same scene trying to play that joke twice. It didn't really work. I wouldn't go to the well too often on that joke because it was funny the one time. But once you get into the second and third portrayal of that joke, which it seems like Deadpool and Wolverine is going to be a lot of that kind of stuff, don't know that it's going to really land hard. But I would expect, fully expect, and we certainly saw it in the teaser trailer that they put up on the Super Bowl and then the expanded one that they put up on YouTube, that Deadpool will be taking the total piss out of Disney, the MCU, uh, Fox, and all that kind of stuff. I remember seeing like a Fox a setup in there where it was destroyed and all that kind of stuff. I expect the film to be very self-aware, very meta in nature. And we certainly received lots of those kind of jokes and punchlines throughout the course of the first two Deadpool films. We did also get word on a marketing strategy that they're going to be using, playing off the Dune 2 sand vagina bucket popcorn thing. Over-the-top popcorn buckets are becoming all the rage with new movie releases, but nothing caught people's attention more than the Dune Part 2 popcorn bucket from AMC Theaters. The bucket caused a huge stir online, with many making NSFW jokes. While the folks behind the Doom Part 2 bucket didn't intend for people to view it in a lewd way, Marvel Studios has decided to take the idea and run with it. For Deadpool and Wolverine, Kevin Feige took to the stage at CinemaCon during Disney's presentation and revealed the movie will have an intentionally risque popcorn bucket. That was a weird bucket. It was such a weird thing, and it certainly went viral. I remember the first time I saw it, I was like... Is that a Sarlacc vagina? Like, I don't know what they're going for with that. And um, I don't think that they realized what the joke was or the punchline that was the popcorn bucket itself. And that's probably why it went so viral. And there's so many uh, tweets. I saw like a dude in a picture that said, I I just came for like the popcorn bucket vagina. (laughs) Like when he went to go see the movie, Uh, like he was sitting next to the poster or whatever, which I thought was funny. A lot of people had a lot of fun with that. I do think the fact that it was probably completely unintentional by the creators of Doom 2, you know, the marketing team at AMC Theaters and all that stuff, as the reason that it went so viral because it was unintentional, you know, trying to to lean into it completely intentionally with Deadpool, you know, what's he going to be doing, screwing a chimichanga on a popcorn bucket? I, I don't really know. But I don't blame them for doing this. It certainly caused a lot of conversation. It was all over TikTok. It was all over YouTube. It was all over Twitter. It was all over Facebook. It was literally everywhere, that stupid popcorn bucket. And hopefully this isn't like the trend where everyone makes the most disgusting, inappropriate popcorn buckets in the history of the world. But it certainly fits a character like Deadpool and Wolverine. And I also think it does signal that Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios are going to run with this R-rated thing. You know, we are going to make R-rated movies in the MCU when we have the characters that are appropriate for it. Certainly Deadpool is one of those characters. Wolverine, on occasion, I think, can be a character like that. They haven't always used him like that. Blade seems like a character like that. So there are some things they can do with that, and it feels like they're really leaning into the more edgy aspects of Deadpool that he brings to the MCU that certainly no characters that they had had in the MCU to this date, they've done anything like that with. It really just hasn't happened, so it appears that they're going a little bit more, I don't know, disgusting and over the top, which certainly fits Deadpool. Now, we also had some scenes and some talk regarding the upcoming Captain America movie, the first movie starring Anthony Mackie as Sam Wilson as Captain America, no longer Falcon, certainly introduced in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier show on Disney+, Plus, which was not very good. It started out all right kind of fizzles out by the end, makes uh, Anthony Mackie's Captain America look like a complete moron, basically by the end. But they're running with it. We're getting Brave New World, and we do know this thing has been a production nightmare so far. But Kevin Feige is saying, this bad boy is on fire. You're going to want to check it out because it's just as good as The Winter Soldier, which is probably the best um, MCU movie they ever made. Maybe it's not like my most favorite or whatever, but just as a movie with the script and everything going on there and the tension and all that kind of stuff, That is a fantastic movie, and we got a couple of scenes. Everyone's wondering about Harrison Ford as Thunderbolt Ross. CinemaCon attendees were shown the first footage of Captain America Brave New World, which includes Harrison Ford as General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross. The scene saw press crowding at the White House, where Ford makes his first appearance as Ross. Sam Wilson stands with him, and the two have a conversation. 
Sam proceeds to make a meta joke about the change in General Ross actors, saying, I'm not used to your new look. Thunderbolt then tells Sam, what you did down in Mexico really opened my eyes, and I want Captain America to rebuild the Avengers. I would say the reference to Mexico is something that happened off scene, or maybe that's the opening scene of Captain America Brave New World. Not really sure about that. We certainly didn't see anything happening in Mexico during the Falcon, the Winter Soldier TV show, which is the only time that we've seen Sam Wilson as Captain America. So I imagine that's probably the opening scene or something that happens basically off screen or whatever. And then we're going to have Captain America, Sam Wilson, tasked with reforming the Avengers. Certainly you need to get the Avengers to back together to have an Avengers movie. I guess it kind of makes sense, you know, when we did the Ant-Man movie and all the Avengers were off, like, doing their own thing. The guy that was back at, like, the Avengers, it wasn't Avengers Tower, it's like the Avengers headquarters, was Sam Wilson. He's certainly somebody that's a card-carrying member of the Avengers now that he's Captain America, I guess, in theory. Maybe he's the leader of the Avengers. Me, personally, I would have um, used Doctor Strange, but obviously we don't have a Doctor Strange movie. Maybe Thor, but obviously we don't have a Thor movie either. So I guess this is the one that we're going to do, and I guess that's going to be part of the motivation, at least, for Sam Wilson as Captain America in Brave New World is that he needs to get the Avengers back together. Does that mean we're going to have lots of cameos as Sam Wilson is going out there and contacting potential new members of the Avengers? Are we going to see Shane chi Are we going to see Captain Marvel? Are we going to see Miss Marvel? Who are we going to see as he's out there recruiting new members for the Avengers? I imagine that's at least a small portion of this, and we're going to get some cameos in it that way, which is probably smart. You're going to need some star power on this one. I don't think a lot of people are real keen on the idea of Sam Wilson as Captain America. I think they're keen on the idea of Sam Wilson as Falcon, the character that they know and love, and the character that Anthony Mackie has basically portrayed in all the movies. Like I said, we got the TV show, but it wasn't all that popular, and it just wasn't all that good. Speaking of Captain America and the Winter Soldier, it appears, at least from the footage that was shown at CinemaCon, that they're going to be including key aspects introduced in the show into the cinematic universe without explanation, which I don't think is a great idea. In a new scene, Ford's Ross is giving a presentation to an audience, which includes Isaiah Bradley. Ross references a recent discovery of the millennia, seemingly found by Captain America on a recent mission. Suddenly, Isaiah and a Secret Service agent seem to be triggered by a word or sound reminiscent of Bucky Barnes as the Winter Soldier. The two appear almost possessed as they seemingly attempt to assassinate the president. Sam begins to fight in civilian clothes rather than his Captain America suit. During the fight, Isaiah jumps out of a window in a manner seemingly also referencing the Winter Soldier. Scary shots of a lab of some kind are seen. There's also a text saying next year. If you are not familiar with Marvel Comics and you haven't seen Falcon and the Winter Soldier on Disney+, Plus, you likely don't know who Isaiah Bradley is. He's a character that was introduced, I, I think it was during the 80s. I might be wrong on that one. But basically, he's like the black Captain America that was unknown and, and never appreciated and no one ever like lauded him. He was kind of like escaped and all this kind of stuff, trying to live a life where nobody realized who he was. But he's another guy that survived, that had the super soldier serum. At one point, I believe it was during World War II. And I believe it's, it's almost like a Tuskegee Airmen kind of situation where they were testing on these guys. So that's who that character is. But not many people know that. Even the fans of the MCU, like who Isaiah Bradley is, and to just have that character in there without explaining who he is or why he might be powerful, he just kind of looks like an old man because he is very old at this time. He wasn't frozen like uh, Steve Rogers. So he certainly aged over time, I think, is a weird idea. I don't think it's really going to work. And then basically playing out the exact same setup or elements from Captain America the Winter Soldier isn't very smart. It's not unique. It's not something new. You're not bringing anything new to the table. You're just playing the greatest hits from Captain America, Steve Rogers. And I think that's probably a bad idea and not a great setup. We've already seen mind-controlled super soldiers that are triggered with the word. They even played on it, you know, within um, Captain America Civil War, you know, when they were kind of using Bucky Barnes when he was in that prison. The guy shows up and he had the textbook and all that stuff. Like, it's cool to explore that stuff, and that stuff is great. And I think Winter Soldier is one of the greatest comic book stories ever written in the history of Captain America, and it's a great movie. But at some point, we need to move on. And in Captain America, if Sam Wilson is going to be Captain America, he probably needs to have his own identity and his own adventures and his own villains and all that kind of stuff and build his own history rather than playing the greatest hits or playing off the beats from Steve Rogers as Captain America. It's probably not a great idea 
keep reminding people about Steve Rogers because in most people's minds, if they're Marvel Comics fans or MCU fans, Steve Rogers is Captain America. Chris Evans is Captain America, and he's not supposed to be around anymore. Probably not a great idea to keep reminding people of that, but Kevin Feige has said this thing is the heat, and they are bringing it in 2025, and he says this is as good as the Winter Soldier. I do not believe Kevin Feige, but I certainly don't blame him for saying that. I do want to say thank you very much for joining me today as we talk about all the CinemaCon 2024 rundowns with Kevin Feige. Speaking on behalf of Disney, they had some other presentations, but we're a comic book channel mostly here kind of covering that kind of stuff. If you would like more coverage on this and other comic book related stuff like comic books themselves or movies, television shows, I do want to invite you to come over and check out the Thinking Critical Patreon. There's a link in the video description. You can get a free week's trial of the highest tier. The doc is right here right now. Get all the stuff that's on there and make an informed decision on whether or not you want to support me and the channel on Patreon. Lots of great stuff there. New podcast basically dropping every single day, all month long. Definitely check that one out. I will hope to see you there in the not-too-distant future.